Hey guys, this is Mectogic, and welcome back to another episode of the Translucent Plastics Archive. In this episode, I'm not going to talk so much about design and aesthetics, which is what I usually do, but in this episode, I'm going to show you what you can actually do in terms of software on one of these old Macs. So this here is an iMac G3 Ruby, uh, personally my favorite color of iMac G3, and an absolute beast of machine. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what you can actually do with this iMac, in 2023 and you may be surprised that there's actually quite a lot you can do with these old old archaic machines so let's get into it all right firstly a few things about the machine that i'm using let's go to about this mac and you'll see that this is a 450 megahertz power pc g3 this is the um the ruby imac so it came in two col uh, two specs 400 megahertz and 450 you may think that's not much of a difference in the modern world with multiple CPU cores and all of that, but it does make some difference on some of the software that we'll be using today. Memory is one gigabyte. That's the maximum, which I've put in. It's PC 100, I think, PC 100, but you can use PC 133 sticks. Uh, I've got two operating systems installed, OS 10, 10.4, uh, Tiger, that's Tiger, and, 10 point, uh, well, and OS 9, of course, which is uh, something this can run very well. Now, what can you do with this iMac? I've got a few apps here that can show you a few different things you can do. Um, you've got your basic features like any computer could do, a dictionary which is built in. You can search any word. In fact, I think you can even search Apple words, but maybe not. You'd have to install the, use the Apple settings. Uh, you can use a calculator. Calculator works just fine as you would expect. Nothing, uh, nothing unusual about any of that. Um, all these apps are loading fast, by the way, because I've got an SSD installed. That does actually really improve the, the speed of everything opening, obviously loading off the disk. Uh, stickies, standard kind of stuff, just the usual text-based editor. You can do very simple things in that, nothing particularly cool. But there are much more advanced things you can do. So let's start with Bean. Bean is one of my favorite word processing apps. It's very basic, it's very straightforward, um, but it can do quite a lot. It's quite powerful. And I'll just show you what Bean looks like. So. Let's type up something there, make it bigger. Let's see, you can do all sorts of formatting. You can do underlines, you can do strike throughs, you can do, um, I'm pretty sure this is, you can do lists with this as well, somehow. Uh, I think there's a way, format, there's line spacing options, there's paragraph stuff. So a lot more advanced than just the basic text. Here we go, numbered list, there you go. Uh, another sentence. It runs really smoothly. Um, you can use things like Word 2008 on this Mac, actually, but I just found that for something that loads really snappy and really quickly, it's it's brilliant. Now you can save the file as an RTF. That's um, pretty much the most compatible thing you could do. But you can also uh, save it as a doc file, dot doc file, a few other options as well. But basically, I would save them as RTF, and then I've got compatibility. And Bean, funnily enough, Bean is actually supported all the way from 10.4, which is what we're on all the way up to Monterey uh, and Ventura, and I think um, even Sonoma, basically. So it, it will work on all Macs, and that's why I think I love Bean as my word processor. It's very compatible with everything. Going on, there's uh, some two web, uh, web browsers that I have, Safari and Arctic Fox. Safari is obviously the default, which is built in. Arctic Fox, though, is a lot more advanced and can do a lot more things. So let's just get to um, what you can do with these. F-Stream, by the way, I won't show you that today, but that essentially allows you to play online radio streams. So very efficient and very fast. It, it will load them basically instantaneously if you have the link. So Safari, uh, Safari, you may think it can't do much, but it can load HTML pages very easily. Now this is FrogFind, which is a really great way to just load stripped down versions of the modern web. So uh, it's particularly useful, I find, for Wikipedia articles. So if I wanted to search something like iMac G3, Wikipedia. This is just basically doing a, a DuckDuckGo search, I'm pretty sure. And there you go, so loaded basically within a second. Uh, and here's Wikipedia. And we can just load it up like that. And there it is. That's basically, that is the Wikipedia page. If you want it to be a bit bigger, you can just use a, you can just zoom it in. And there you go. Loading text is absolutely fine. It can do it can do that without much trouble. There are still a lot of news articles and news, well, news websites that you can load through FrogFind as well. You just basically would look up the article and search it and you would get the results. 
Obviously Macintosh Garden works, and this is the ultimate place, the repository for all of this vintage software that you might want. Uh, all sorts of games, all sorts of uh, fantastic productivity software, just anything you can think of. It's, it's mostly here, uh, unless it's still being sold, of course. Then uh, two more things which are really helpful to have. Uh, there's Iteroni and uh, the Russian version of YouTube, which we call video.2yxa. Now what this site does is quite astonishing. It allows you to download very low-end versions of YouTube and play them on a G3. So if I wanted to type in Mectogic, for instance, do, as my search, uh, it's going to ask for some kind of verification, you know, you're not a bot. I don't really know what this means, all of this stuff, but essentially it loads very quickly and there's your YouTube search. Uh, I can just click on one of my translucent plastics videos, for example this one, and you get some download options here. This won't work for bigger files, I'm pretty sure, but for smaller videos, I think under 10 minutes, it's, it's pretty easy. What you want to get is the 3GP video. That's going to load, uh, it's going to be the easiest to run. MP4 at 360p is a little bit of a stretch on this iMac G3, but 3GP is certainly possible and not an issue at all. It's going to load very well. Once you click that, you basically get this loading screen and it's not really telling you much because it's not updating, but you can click this refresh button and it's just going to tell you how much you've downloaded. And within that 10 seconds that I was just talking, it's already downloaded the whole video. It's done, there it is. So now that it's finished, um, we're just gonna click continue, go down here and to the file that we were looking for. So the 3GP file, which is what we wanted, just click the save button. It's gonna save it. Remember, this is all in Safari. So this is a YouTube video that I'm downloading through Safari, through a web page, And there it is, there's the file. Okay, and I'm just gonna open it up uh, using the QuickTime player. Hey guys, this is Meg Podgers, and welcome to another episode of the Translucent Plastics Archive. Today I'm going to be talking about another... You can see that the playback is really smooth. This model came in a few colours. Um, I, I don't know exactly which, because there's not much... It's only 144p, but it's something. It's a start. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is Iteroni. Now, Iteroni is like that Russian YouTube site. It's a YouTube way, way to access YouTube, but it's a little bit more user-friendly. Now, if I type in here, Mectogic again, um, let's just see what happens. We're going to get search for Mectogic, and it's going to give you right away the videos and even the channel, and you can just start to search things really easily. You can even go to the channel and view some of the videos here, so some of the most recent videos. Now what this is really good for is you click a video uh, and you can download it in a number of different ways. Remember, this is all still, again, in Safari, so very, very easy stuff. Uh, you don't need to install anything special to do this. You just go to iteroni.com. So uh, there's the video there. I'm not going to play it there. That's a little bit, it's probably going to cause some problems. So the best way to do it is to download. You can download in multiple different formats. 720p is the default, but we're not capable of playing 720p on an iMac G3. Um, 360p also is a bit of a stretch on this iMac. You could do it more easily on a G4 machine, but on a G3 under 500 megahertz, it's a bit of a stretch. So uh, I can't really get myself a video form in this, for, in this way, but I, what I could do is I can get audio. So what I'm gonna do is, obviously you don't wanna watch a video and just get the audio, unless it was something like a podcast or a music video. So maybe if we were to get a music video um, and get something special, you can download the web.webm version. So audio slash webm. And you'll see how quickly this downloads. I'm going to click download. And there's the download appearing. And it's done. That's it. And to play the a webm video, uh, or audio in this case, I just drag it into Arctic Fox. And that's going to give me playback. So... It's going to come up with a little player. Hey guys, this is Mectogic, back with another episode of the Translucent Plastics Archive. Today's episode, I'm talking about the Apple Promise. So you can see that it loads it really easily, and you get this, this sort of playhead, and you can once you've started playing it, you can adjust where you want to play from. Really easy music player for um, any kind of music. This is a really good iMac 4 playing music in that, by the way, because you've got these Harman Kardon speakers at the front. Now, a lot of them have rotted uh, over the time, over the years, but I've managed to replace mine, and it's not hard to find replacement speaker parts for these. And you'll hear 
just how good this um, iMac really is and how loud it can get if I was to play some music on it. Now, uh, that's two ways of getting YouTube. So you can get 3GP videos, which are low quality but playable, or you can get go through Iteroni and you can get uh, these lower, well, just audio and play the audio, which is greatly great for music. So that's web browsing. There's more to that than just that though, of course. There's a lot more you can do. I've shown you Frog Find, but I haven't shown you more about Arctic Fox, nor the other thing you can do with an iMac G3, which is very obvious and very cool, which is uh, emulators. Emulators and vintage games are really great on this thing. So what I've got here for you is uh, an emulator called Rocknez, and I've got a game, Super Mario Bros, which will be very familiar. So let's load that up, and you can go full screen in this, and then you've basically got a CRT playing a vintage NES game. I mean, that's pretty great. Let's have a go. So I'm just going to press this and launch it up, and go full screen. Well, I didn't claim to be very good at the game, but that's what you can do. You can play my Mario. If you wonder why it slowed down there, the reason it slowed down and got stuck is because I was doing some volume controls. See, uh, anything you do is going to really cause problems because this is a single CPU at 450 megahertz. You really want to give it as much of a good chance as possible to do the task that it's doing. So it's not really a multitasking machine. But let's see what you can do with Mario. It's loading perfectly. So you can see it's very smooth. So that shows you uh, one of the games you can play through an NES um, what, emulator. Another game you can play is uh, on Kig B. Kig B is a Game Boy emulator, which is, uh, again, easy to run and very, very fun and really great use of the screen to get a full screen Game Boy experience. So it's just classic Tetris. The Game Boy version, at least. And uh, I'd have to reconfigure my controls to get this right, but that shows you that Tetris is perfectly playable. It's no lag at all, completely playable. And the music, of course, playing as well. Now, what about Arctic Fox? Because this is really the ultimate thing that you need on an iMac G3 in 2023. This is essentially a, a form of a modern web browser. So what can you do with this? You can do proper, proper searches. Um, so I can go to google.com. I'll uh, load the Australian one, .au. And there you go, you actually have real Google now. And that means I can search all sorts of things. So if I was to search Mectogic on actual Google, I'm going to get my YouTube channel uh, rec recommended. Well, once I go to the uh, filter, and there it is, uh, Mectogic on YouTube. So perfect. You can do it exactly that way. Um, and if you wanted to actually load something, well, some, some websites will load slower than others, of course. But going to the, um, if I searched iMac G3 Wikipedia, as I did before on using FrogFind, this is a way to load the whole web page and get it to present itself really well. How about I go full screen here and you'll see what it looks like to go full screen Wikipedia using Arctic Fox. Again, this is um, really excellent stuff. This is community driven type uh, software, which has allowed us to use this Arctic Fox, which is a form of Firefox, essentially. And there we go, uh, we've loaded Wikipedia perfectly. It's gonna be a little slower and more sluggish than FrogFind, of course, because you're actually loading the whole website rather than just the HTML text. But there you go. Um, scrolling's a little tough, but if I can, do, I can do page down, page up, all of that, everything's fine. And you can click links and everything. So I'd call that modern web, essentially. So that gives you a quick demo of what you can do with an iMac G3 in uh, 2023. It's certainly more than some of you may think. And uh, there's so much more to discover that I haven't even shown you. Um, and as a final teaser, I will show you a little bit of Classic Cube. Might as well, since that is one of the most popular games in the world. This is Minecraft, uh, but an early version, which is meant to be playable on an iMac G3. So what I can do here is I've got it on low fog because that's about the best it can do. But you'll see that I've got Classic Cube and that looks like modern Minecraft effect effectively running on this 
fairly well. I may be able to slightly reduce that fog, actually, if I just go to my settings. Let's see what I can get here. Get the lowest fog setting. There we go. That's giving us a very respectable... I'm going to call that about 30 frames per second. So more than playable. Uh, obviously, you can't see anything. But, hey... That's an iMac G3. You can't expect too much from it, and the fact that you're actually getting something that resembles Minecraft here is pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. And of course, you can build stuff as well, as you would expect. Just like the real game. So there you go. I hope you found that video interesting, and please subscribe for more.